Hello, I am Scott Brady, and welcome to Episode 3 of Crossing Continents, where I continue my journey across Africa into the Republic of Malawi. In their native language of Chechua, Malawi means flames. The sun sets across the Great Rift Lake ablaze with magenta, lilac, crimson, and coral. Let's talk about bribes while traveling. So the reality is, is that in many parts of Africa, many parts of the Americas, many parts of Asia, you're going to get stopped, you're going to be asked for a bribe, you're going to be intimidated in some way, or maybe you make a mistake and they're going to find a way to capitalize on that financially. But I think the most important thing is to avoid judgments of others' decisions. Um, it's just another form of virtue signaling that oh, I'm more virtuous because I haven't paid a bribe, when there's really no way, if you've traveled at all in your life, to know for certain if you've paid a bribe or not. Certain fees or even receipts can be made up. You just never know. Um, so I think it's good to follow your own values and judgments and then um, be really careful about judging others. So for me personally, I do everything that I can to avoid paying a monetary bribe. I've never done so knowingly, uh, but I will hand out an ice cold water. Um, I will, if the situation dictates, hand out an ice cold Coke or a, or a Red Bull uh, just to break the ice, literally. So be careful judging others on the whole bribe thing. The border is actually fairly easy. Um, the the folks that I stayed with in Tet, they actually had a, a contact at the border that helps them with some of their trucks uh, getting moved from from country to country. So they were really helpful and connected me up with a gentleman by the name of Born who knows the process well, and it actually um, made it very relaxed. It would have been easy regardless, but sometimes that power of local knowledge. So he helped me get uh, the insurance very easy and he helped me get SIM card for the burner phone, super easy too. So it was just a really helpful way to get through the border, lowered the, the concerns. And after a couple hours, I was all done, uh, but it was getting late in the day. So I found uh, this little accommodation. It's actually a place for camping and for accommodation, uh, but it's, um, an old pottery production facility. I don't know if they still make pottery here or not, but it's uh, really a beautiful spot surrounded by mountains. There's wildflowers all, all behind the truck here in the camp. Um, yeah, just incredible granite mountains all around. So I'm looking forward to a, an overland route today over to Lake Malawi. Uh, this has been something that I've really wanted to see, uh, kind of walk in the footsteps of Livingston just have that connection to such incredible history. So I'm looking forward to that. Off, onto the road. Okay, so second speeding ticket of the trip. And I drive so slow, I really do, I really do. But if you don't see those speed limits, man, they are always hiding in just the right spot. So I was going 57 in a 55 kilometer zone. Uh, I think the key is, is that, you know, to understand if you are speeding, then take responsibility for that. Um, and then, you know, he asked for a, for me to pay him. And I said, how much is it to get a receipt? And of course it was much more, but uh, I just prefer to pay and get the receipt. So that way, 
at least there's a better chance that it's going to go into the local municipality and maybe go towards schools and other things that help the individuals in this local area. But uh, yeah, speeding tickets are tough in Africa. I think I'm probably lucky to have only gotten two in two months, but uh, it's very difficult to keep track of the signs all the time because they come at you quickly. So speeding ticket number two. The Republic is 21% water with Lake Malawi and it's populated with over 21 million Malawians. Wow, this D33 road is awesome. Crazy. Beautiful. Fun switchback. This would be great on a motorcycle. We are come from what? I come from America. America. All right. That's a fair part. Look at that. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> There's a spell in. Ah, perfect. Yeah. Good job. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. <laughs> that's so cool. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, Thank yeah. you guys. I mean, how cool is this thing? It's got the rack on the top. It's even got an awning. It's got some fuel cans, just like me, a couple boxes, front runner rack. <laughs> they even added the spare tire to the back. That is so fun. And they were the nicest guys, super sweet. While Malawi is one of the world's poorest countries, the people of this landlocked republic have a beautiful warmth and joy to them that demonstrates a depth of family and community that few first world nations can demonstrate. What a great road coming up here. It's what travel by overland vehicle is all about getting to a historic place on the lesser of two paths. All right, so I'm heading my way up to Livingstonia. Livingstonia was built a few years after the death of Dr. Livingston in the late 1800s. And it's a pretty rough track to get up there. You know, it's definitely a, a four wheel drive road call it and a lot of switchbacks and you gotta pay attention to tire placement so it's a nice little adventure to get up to a historic location there's also some cool places to stay up there too and that's if you come in from the coast side it's the the rougher track so fun nice to be on a challenging road in the grenadier So I'm here in beautiful Livingstonia. This is a historic village. It was uh, constructed in the late 1800s, just a few years after Dr. Livingston passed away. Um, there was a renewed interest in providing support in this area. So some folks came down and developed this area. They built the stone home behind me in the early 1900s. But way up on a plateau, it was a little bit safer for them with malaria, but you can see Lake Malawi off in the distance. And it is a very fun road to get up here. It's a, a four-wheel drive road for sure. I put it into low range just because it's so steep. You want to keep the heat out of the transmission. So low range and lock the center differential lock and the Grenadier climbed right up. But it's a steep track and it's fun to climb from the Lake Malawi shoreline all the way up to well over a thousand feet here. Fuel was really a concern for me in Malawi as there was limited petrol throughout the country. So I came in from Mozambique with a full tank and I had two 20 liter jerry cans and two 18 liter giant loop fuel bladders on board. Okay, so hello from Malawi and let's talk a little bit about checkpoints let's talk about when you get stopped on the road it varies a lot around the world but there are a couple things that i believe are a good foundation for uh, checks checkpoints military checkpoints police checkpoints is uh, to always roll your window down about halfway um, you don't want to roll your window down all the way where someone could come through the window but rolling down your window about halfway shows 
a sense of openness and respect and compliance, but you're not rolling the window down all the way. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to remove your sunglasses. There's two reasons for that. The, the most important reason is you want to make eye contact. You want to increase that sense of humanity between you and the person that's asking you questions. And the second reason is uh, they may identify your sunglasses as something that they would very much like to have. So I, I happen to really like my sunglasses. So I, I remove them and I put them in the center console out of the way. And then that solves two of those problems. The other thing that you want to do is have all of your documents readily accessible. And there's a way to do that. One of the ways that I like to do it is to have two sets of documents, originals that are a little bit more tucked away, and then a very professionally curated set of copies, color copies uh, that I keep in a folder. That way I can, pre can present copies of everything uh, to, to, the, to the people that are inspecting you. It's always a good idea to handle um, or hand them your driver's license as opposed to your passport, unless they specifically ask for your passport. And then you always wanna have a second driver's license uh, for a bunch of reasons, but uh, it's a good idea to hand them your, driver, your driver's license as opposed to as opposed to your passport. And then hand them those copies. Uh, they're, they're most likely gonna ask for the originals, but it does, for, those, for the checkpoints that are less official, uh, it actually solves a bunch of problems. Um, that way, if they're not an official border crossing and you realize that quickly, um, all you've done is lost a set of copies. So those are things to consider. Um, yeah, be friendly, smile, tell them how much you love their country because there's you're traveling here for a reason. Uh, Malawi is beautiful and I tell them that I'm enjoying their beautiful country and their wonderful people. Um, so it's a way for them to have ownership in your experience. It changes their perspective of your experience. So just a couple tips for checkpoints along your travels. Oh, wow. So swimming here in Lake Malawi, just beautiful water temperature is perfect massive lake and this is supposed to be a spot that doesn't have crocs and hippos so time will tell You're hypermiling the Grenadier because there's no fuel in Malawi. Getting 11.9 liters per 100k. So you get good fuel economy. That's better than 20 miles a gallon. How about that? Okay, here I am on Lake Malawi, and there's very little fuel available in Malawi. Most of the fuel stations I came across were either out of fuel or had huge queues. So fortunately, I came in from Mozambique with an additional 40 liters in the jerry cans and then 36 more liters in the two giant loop fuel bladders. So I had those strapped down and I'm still about 70, 80 kilometers from the Tanzanian border. Um, and I've got about a eighth of a tank of fuel and then I just am adding the 40 liters from the jerry cans. I've already added the fuel from the bladders, but it's gonna be enough to get me into Tanzania where fuel availability is not a problem. Uh, so it was cutting it close. We did a, just about a thousand kilometers here, including quite a bit of dirt travel in Malawi. But uh, so glad I had the fuel with me and I'm so glad I've got these super siphons. They are just so useful. Just put it up on the tire there and then just runs right into the tank. Very useful tool. Wow, so here I am right at the water's edge of Lake Malawi. Beautiful little camp spot, not far off of the main highway. Um, 
camp right on the beach. So this country just continues to surprise me with how beautiful it is and how easy it is to travel here. And also just how wonderful the overlanding is. The trail that I did today up to Livingstonia was just awesome. And uh, had the vehicle in low range, center differential locked and just got to see a beautiful part of the world. So what a great evening. Sun's about to set, enjoying my time.